The only birds that live on the moon are hummingbirds. They are lunar white and the size of dogs, and they travel across the lunar landscape in vast clouds. Their wings vibrate something inside the inner ear that makes one feel euphoric, as if they are floating. During those fleeting moments when they kissed, he wondered, am I inside a cloud of hummingbirds? The fact that he kissed her had made the train ride bearable, and that was saying a lot, as the Sea of Tranquility line was easily the worst subway on the moon, especially late at night. It must have been close to 1 a.m. when the ancient plastic and aluminum monstrosity stopped in the middle of nowhere, forcing Hieronymus to sit for hours in the hot and crowded subway car. The bright fluorescent lights flickered on and off. Periodic announcements from a cackling speaker explained the reasons for the delay, but no one listened as nearly every person squeezed in with him was drunk. Everyone in that loud, sweaty mob must have been returning from parties or concerts or other nocturnal events. Some were loud, some were sleeping, a couple were sick. Two or three fights broke out, and there was even singing. Still, he hardly noticed them. Earlier that evening, at an amusement park, under the luminous earth, he kissed a girl and this delightful memory blocked out the debauchery all around him. She was beautiful in a way he had never known before. She was a foreigner, a tourist. She was from Earth. He arrived home at five in the morning, had a terrible shouting fight with his father, stumbled into his room and passed out. He slept for seven hours, then woke completely disoriented. Through his grogginess, Hieronymus tried to remember the previous night. Not that there was much difference between night and day. The sky was always the same reddish tone of the artificial atmosphere. Dusky dawn color is what the earthborn called it. She called it that. She. And what was her name? What kind of a young man was he to kiss a girl and the next morning struggle to remember her name? It's not like he was drunk. He wasn't. He peered out from under his covers at the clock on his messy desk. It said twelve. His forgetfulness must have been from other places than lack of sleep. There was a strong smell of motor oil coming from somewhere. He tossed his covers aside, shocked to find himself not only still dressed, but covered in a strange industrial filth. Greenish gunk, dirt, grime. His white plastic jacket lay on the floor, stained in motor oil, with a huge rip in its side. He had also fallen asleep with his goggles on. Usually, he'd have to wear them all day long, then toss the pixie damn things off to the side before going to bed each night. He hated them. They were ugly and utilitarian, with black rubber straps. The lenses were slightly purple. At least, when he was alone in his room, he could be free of them. But everywhere else, he had to wear them. It was the law. It was because of the goggles that he had met the Earth Girl. Slowly, the memories floated in. The evening reassembled itself. She had an Earth name. The kind of name you never heard on the moon because it was so trendy on Earth, and lunarites were always a little behind the curve when it came to fads like that. It was a sentence for a name. When she first told him, he pretended not to let on how awkward it was, but after a few minutes with her, it seemed completely normal. And now he lay there in his bed, fully clothed, and furious with himself for not remembering. He was about to take his goggles off and go back to sleep, with wondrous dreams of the kiss they shared, when it suddenly came back to him. Not the girl's name, but that other terrifying thing they did together. The illegal thing. He covered his face with his hands. He was only 16, and already his life was over. Was he mad? Was he completely out of his mind? What he did with that girl was so far beyond forbidden. If the authorities found out, he would be sent to a prison on the far side of the moon with an automatic life sentence. He would disappear. 
those rotten goggles, the same goggles that attracted the earth girl, also attract the police. They set him apart. They inform all of lunar society that he is one of them, a 100% lunar boy. Hieronymus took several deep breaths. His first line of thought was that he was in trouble with his father, but not with the police. Not yet. He looked at the clock again, and reasoned it was over twelve hours ago that he saw her. He dropped her off at her hotel and caught the last subway out of Lemzone 1, far away on the other side of the Sea of Tranquility.